Now we were having to use a, a different thing this morning. Had a glitch. Sometimes the devil seems to fight all kinds of things. And uh, she told me, she said, I've got to give you some new instructions. I don't do good with like, it's like you tell them, it's like, what'd you just say? <laughs> so I, I frustrate my wife on many levels, but uh, that one, but hopefully uh, we, we pray that uh, all goes well. Because uh, uh, again, I like to uh, put up the videos. I have had uh, uh, a couple of people that told me they, they watched them and, um, and I thought, well, <laughs> the one was worth it to me. And I thought, uh, I thought, well, it's not a big thing. And for people who miss, so uh, we continue to put those up, started that during some of the COVID things. And so uh, I like to put them up uh, just for uh, help to those who, uh, who do see them. But uh, this morning, uh, I want to preach to you on a subject and uh, maybe a topic out of Scripture. And I guess sometimes I, I think, well, uh, and I didn't go back and look. Uh, the Lord had sort of laid this on my heart early in the week. Uh, actually, that and my Father's Day message for next week. Uh, so uh, I was thinking on those and, and thought on this, and I thought, well, I've preached on that recently, and I know I've read the account of it uh, because I'll be uh, using the latter portion of this, and it speaks of Thomas, and I'll read that in a moment. And uh, and I thought, well, every Easter I probably mention him because he is uh, ranks up there as one of my uh, favorite people, and I say by that just because uh, he was a doubter, he had some problems, he had some trials, and the Lord met those, uh, and I uh, thought that was neat. And, um, and I thought of that some this week, and I thought, well, I hope I'm not just repeating a sermon, but I don't think I am. I don't think I gave one just a different title. A little different thought maybe on uh, what the Lord did for Thomas this morning, and that's what I want to give you this morning, because I think it can be an encouragement, because uh, I, I think many of us may find us in the same boat, maybe not exactly the need that Thomas had, but other needs such as that, and I hope you'll see that this morning. But in John chapter 20, I want to begin my reading in verse 26, and we'll read the latter portion of the chapter. And it said, And after eight days again, his disciples were within, and Thomas with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst, and said, Peace be unto you. Then saith he to Thomas, Reach hither thy finger, and behold my hands, and reach hither thy hand, and thrust it into my side, and be not faithless, but believing. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. And many other signs truly did Jesus in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life through his name. Let us pray this morning. Our Heavenly Father, Lord, we're thankful for the day, thankful for what you've given to us, thankful for a good time of prayer, and Father, some good fellowship, and Lord, uh, we're thankful for the great hymns, and truly, it's because because you live that we have uh, uh, the hope that we do, and we're thankful for, uh, again, the message and song. We ask now that you might bless the preaching of your word. I pray that you'll help me this morning, that you might fill me with the power of your spirit, help me to preach those things that you've laid on my heart. And Father, I pray it can be a help to all who will hear. Bless in the class in the back. And we just give you the praise and the glory for all that you do. And we ask it all in Jesus' name. Amen. The, uh, I wanted to preach on the subject this morning of some need a little more. Some need a little more. And uh, I guess uh, when I think of Thomas, I, I think of uh, some of those particular things. You know, uh, I don't know if you've ever come into situations like that. Uh, it seems like most things I do. I come up and uh, I, I need a little more. It doesn't matter what I'm doing. If I start a project, if it's tape, I'll need a little more tape. And usually I don't have any. You've got to go find some of that. Uh, if you're putting something in, uh, you know, uh, matter of fact, we had had a, uh, something put in uh, replacing a, an appliance and uh, we weren't in the house and didn't measure before we went to the store and, uh, when we ordered it and stuff and had our son measure. And all I was thinking is it, is it came. It's like, I hope it fits. Uh, because sometimes there's nothing you can do when you need a little more. I don't know if you've ever had something that you're trying to, you know, it's so wide and you've only got such a space and it's like, what do we do? Uh, you know, needing a little more room sometimes. All of us have probably been in a place at one time or the other, need a little more money. Uh, something came up and uh, you don't have those things. And, and some of that, when we look at needing a little more, it can be trivial, it can be something else. But we understand maybe the, the problem that exists. And like I said, some things like 
tape or maybe just a, a little more time or something like that. It might just be uh, trivial and about something not too important. Uh, other things could be more important. But then again, when we look at it and we take it to a spiritual sense, Thomas needed a little more and it was very important. He needed a little more in a spiritual sense, a little more than maybe the others because Thomas said, uh, he said uh, he wasn't there when Jesus first appeared to him. And he said, I just won't believe, I just can't believe uh, the resurrection, except I see the handprint of the nails, except I'm able to touch. He knew the physical scars that the body of Jesus would bear or should bear, and uh, that he would have from the cross. Thomas had knew what had happened, whether he had seen it. I guess scripture doesn't really tell us none, but the apostle John was there. But it seems obviously clear here that he knew that there were marks from that cross, that uh, the body of Jesus bore uh, something in his hands and that he bore something in his feet and that even his side and that even uh, Thomas said, I want to see that. I, I need to see that to believe. Jesus would later uh, chide him a little bit. He said, he said, you know, this is for you to believe. He said others, uh, he said they believed without seeing this. But, you know, the Lord came and he met the need of Thomas. We often call him Doubting Thomas uh, just because of these particular events. But, you know, there were some people in Scripture, and there's a, a few scattered about, and I may give you a couple others uh, thinking on him today just by way of illustration or way of example. But there were some others, and, and some of those in Scripture that they required a little more. And the neat thing about it is that we see that God gave them what they needed, that God met that need when they needed a little more faith. Maybe they needed a little more encouragement. Uh, maybe they needed a little something else at that time. And it seemed like God came through to meet those needs. You know, we're all, uh, I guess, a little different in makeup and uh, as far as how we think and how we uh, receive and act and do that. We're all individuals. And, and uh, of course, the amazing thing, if you read your scripture, God knows that. Uh, we're fearfully and wonderfully made. We're loved just as we are. Uh, you know, matter of fact, a lot of people just need to hear that. Uh, the Lord knows them. He loves them. And uh, he desires to help them. Matter of fact, even if you uh, read at the end of the, the closing passage of this scripture, it's not the exact uh, closure of the book of John, uh, but it sort of sums things up because it said that Jesus did many things in the presence of his disciples and the book didn't even write them all. John couldn't write all those. The other ones didn't write. They wrote what God inspired them to write. And we have that account in the scriptures of the gospels of what Jesus did in his earthly ministry and life. And then, of course, the rest of the Bible talking about the events of the church. And after that, referring back to the events of Christ on the earth in the gospels. But notice what the closure of this particular letter uh, or account and witness account that John writes. He said, but these are written. And he said they're written for a reason. And matter of fact, John is one of the great books to read if somebody uh, needs salvation, doubts their salvation, they've just been saved. John's a great book to read because you see uh, the gospel of Jesus Christ enacted, living out. There's so many pictures uh, that Jesus gives us of himself, of his ministry, of salvation within the gospel of John. It's sort of an easy read and it just explains exactly what Jesus came to do. But notice what the purpose was it was written that you might believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that believing you might have life through his name. That's why he came. He came that we might have life. He came that we might have hope, that we might have a home in heaven, that our sins would be forgiven. And he would go to the cross of Calvary and shed his precious blood and die in the place of each and every sinner that's ever lived from Adam till all that will ever be born. Jesus met their needs on the cross of Calvary. He took their place and he did that. He did it for you, he did it for me. He met our needs on the cross of Calvary. And if we've come and believed upon him and trusted in him, the Bible says that we have life through his name. Thomas needed some of those things. Jesus met him and he met Thomas where he was at, even though he was a doubter, even though he had troubles, even though he had some problems. He needed a little more we might say, Jesus met him where he was at. I find that quite fascinating. As a matter of fact, I find it quite uh, comforting and quite thankful because uh, I know even in my life, uh, dealt with uh, some doubting about my salvation, some other things over the years, uh, you know, had some 
uh, just trouble with that, things that uh, you try. And of course, uh, it, it just comes again from a lot of things. The devil initiates a lot of that. A lot of folks, uh, even their service to the Lord, the devil, uh, you know, he, he's hard on them about that. And why? Because just like Thomas, he didn't want Thomas to uh, know the Lord. He didn't want Thomas to continue serving. Uh, the devil would have been glad had Thomas uh, said, I'm done with this. And, uh, and he leaves that instead of being faithful. And faithful, uh, matter of fact, we know these men, uh, uh, they would all be martyred for their faith. According to the records we have, say John, uh, they just didn't quite uh, uh, kill him when they tried. Uh, boiled him in hot oil, exiled him to Patmos. He'd write the book of Revelation. Uh, but many of the others... Uh, would suffer some, uh, some cruel uh, deaths that would come. And they all did that for the glory of God. And God would give them the faith. And here you have a, a, a man who at one time, he's having some trouble with his faith. He's faithless. And he says, I need something a little more. But we find that Jesus came and gave him that little bit more than he needed. And some, whether they need a little more proof, a little more encouragement, or a little more attention to needs as did others. Now, Obviously, some people, when they would read this, are like, well, I need that. And they'll, and they'll start, and they'll come up with something almost ridiculous. You know, the Lord knows their heart. The Lord knew Thomas's heart. I think he knew that Thomas was just searching and that he needed something. And I just think it was need, and really need, that Jesus met that need. You know, and uh, we find that the Lord has met certain folks in Scripture. He's met their need uh, where they were spiritually. I don't think all their actions are recommended. We'll see one here uh, in a minute. I, I don't know that when God calls us to do something, uh, that that should be our response, but it was that man's response and God met his needs. You know, the book of James chapter four and six, uh, verse six says that uh, God giveth more grace. And I think there's times when uh, he extends a little more when he meets those needs, because again, he knows our heart. He knows where we're at. He knows when somebody's maybe just trying to make a, uh, an open mockery of the things that are spiritual saying well if God would only do this you know to uh, you know make the sun not shine or do something just as that can God do that of course he can uh, has he done it in the past actually look in your Bible he's done some things with the, the sun and he's done some things with other things that are miraculous and yes he can does he do those kind of things he's capable but here we find that God knew the heart he's seen what was needed and he gave the man what was needed. You know, you think of some of those in scriptures. Uh, I thought of Gideon, Gideon the judge, in Judges chapter six, and he came and God said, I want to use you to deliver uh, the nation of Israel. And of course, Gideon's one of those, uh, who me? Uh, he's already hiding from the Midianites. He's threshing wheat. He's trying to feed his people, feed his family. He's doing the things he would. So he's already sort of out there in harm's way, if you will. And God said, I'm going to make you a mighty man. And, and Gideon wasn't that. He's like, look, I'm hiding away. I'm a, you know, I, he wasn't a coward because he was doing something that needed done, something to be brave for. But he said, I can't do that. And he would throw out his fleece. Uh, interesting reading uh, in Judges chapter six, he would throw out the fleece. One night uh, the fleece would be full of dew, the ground around it dry. Next time the, the fleece would be dry, the ground around it wet. You may remember the account in Judges chapter six, but God gave Gideon something that he needed. You can look at other people in scripture. Uh, you know Moses at times, and uh, I think I used him as an illustration recently, and Moses said, I, I can't talk, I can't do that. I mean, he's talking to uh, you know, a bush burning in God's presence, and uh, God would come down, and Moses uh, again saying, I can't do all this. And it's like, you've already seen something uh, that nobody else uh, uh, may, may get to see or, or something of that, and all that God would do for him. And, uh, and I think God got a little bit on... Uh, maybe as we might say, an aggravated side with Moses. And, uh, and Moses is an interesting study in that and his relationship to God. And what a man who walked with God when you read what he did. Uh, and yet uh, God still held righteous though. Moses never, uh, never entered into the promised land over some sin. And uh, all of that's interesting. But God gave him what he needed to do what God wanted him to do and what God needed him to do. God met those needs. God gave him a little more. I do like the account of Thomas, and Thomas was physically able to uh, do something that not everybody got to do. Matter of fact, we don't have that recorded anywhere else in Scripture, that when Jesus came back a few days later and came and met with the disciples, of course, as he just sort of comes in with the doors being shut, 
Remember, he was in his glorified body. Everything lined up perfect. All the molecules. He, he wasn't a ghost form. He resurrected bodily. Don't let us ever read that and think that. Jesus came out with a body because Thomas was able to, uh, to handle that later on. But he comes into the room and he has to announce himself with peace be unto you because uh, they were probably a little uh, uh, frightened at that time. But then he says, reach your finger. He says, behold my hands and reach hither uh, thy hand and thrust it into my side. Because Thomas may remember that on Calvary, when Jesus was hanging there because of the Passover coming, that they told him that they needed to, uh, to break their legs and do that. And after they come and Jesus was already dead, but they jabbed him with a spear. So there was a wound in his side because it said that uh, out came water and blood. And scripture tells of that mark that would have been made in his side, but Jesus already being dead. And they broke the legs that again, they couldn't push up because crucifixion being the death by suffocation. And they did that because of the Passover. So they didn't have to leave them. Some people could survive crucifixion uh, for a long period of time. Again, it was meant to be a very grueling, torturous death. But because of the Jewish Passover, they were going to quicken those things that day. And they were going to break the legs of the three that were uh, crucified on Calvary that day. And Jesus would, uh, uh, would already be dead at that time. He'd already given up the ghost and all that was done on Calvary for man's salvation had already been taken place other than uh, he would be buried in the resurrection to complete the gospel, uh, buried in three days and three nights in the borrowed tomb, resurrected on that third day by the power of God. And he would complete those things. But he would come and as Thomas would know of these things, Jesus would invite him to reach out and he says, touch my hands. And he would actually probably feel the small of his hands where Jesus would have that wound of where they would nail him to the cross, probably bound those hands as well. Uh, Cause again, the flesh wouldn't have just all supported that. That's why he probably wouldn't have. Nobody was there. The pictures you see, nobody was there. Nobody knows exactly. They sometimes make some pictures. They probably don't look like him. Uh, the, some of their thoughts about him are wrong. Matter of fact, Calvary in the picture would have been a horrible picture that most of the people wouldn't want to see. It's not these pictures you see with a drop or two of blood coming out of the palms of Christ and him hanging there in a very uh, unique thing. Some of those pictures are not what they should be. And uh, chances are he was uh, probably nailed through the, the small part of his wrist that those bones might hold and that they might help him to hang there, which horrible pain that that would have inflicted. But he invited Thomas to touch that wound. He invited Thomas to touch the side of where that spear would have went in. And Jesus gave him a little more and he met his need there and he gave him what he needed. I still find that again quite fascinating that here was a man who had some issues, a man who was struggling in his faith. He was doubting some things and Jesus met him where he was. He gave him a little more. You know, I think uh, again, and as I draw, I want to give you a few things about that this morning. And I just want you to think about it because wherever you're at, wherever you find yourself in your life, wherever you find uh, the needs that you may have, and maybe it's a, maybe it's a, a little doubt like Thomas. Maybe it's uh, some oppression from some things of the devil that's telling us, well, you can't serve God. Your, your past haunts you. You can't be forgiven. I mean, the devil does all kinds of things like that. Maybe he tells us, well, we just can't serve God. You just don't have the ability to do that, even though God has used uh, whatever. Matter of fact, we know the scripture tells us uh, that sometimes he'll take the least things and he'll make them great. What did God do to these folks? They made the difference in them that he can make a difference in you. And he gave them a little more. And uh, I want to give you some things very quickly this morning. And uh, just a reminder of what Jesus did that he gave a little more unto this man, Thomas. And the first thing that we think of is, as we said, is he responded to his need. You know, I again find that all the neat things. That Jesus knew what the need was when he came. He knew that Thomas was doubting. He knew that he had some issues of heart. He knew that uh, his faith uh, was going to waver, and yet Jesus responded to his need. Jesus knows your need. He knows if you're lost today and you need a Savior. He can confirm Christ in your heart. Now you need to take what Scripture has. It still comes down to it's a choice by faith that we believe on the Word of God and the record we have of Christ, and we believe what he said about it. 
But if we struggle with that, we ask the Holy Spirit for help. We ask God to give us what we need. Ask him to confirm those things in our heart to give us that. But it still comes down to a matter of faith that we trust what the scripture says about Jesus and what he did for us on the cross of Calvary. But I think that God, uh, when someone seeks the Lord, I think that the Lord meets them and he'll respond to those needs. We're thankful that throughout scripture, Jesus responded to needs, to those who met him, to the, the woman who reached out and, and touched the hem of his garment and some healing went out. He, he responded to those needs, to those that he encountered along his way, uh, even as the one we uh, looked at last week. And he set that man straight in his life. And we look at some of the people that Jesus met in scripture. He responded to the need that they had and he's able to meet that. Aren't we thankful that the Lord is able and he's able to take care of your need, whether it's a doubt of, and a lack of faith, whether it's a doubt of the strength and ability, whether it's maybe just uh, some of us, we just sort of feel like life has worn us down. These last few years, I think there's more people who just, uh, they just think that I'm just tired. Uh, I'm just, you know, this world is just weary. And they listen to the bad things of this world and they just think, well, it's just, a, it's just become a hard place and it's just become a weary land. And for some reason, it seems like there's more and more people you talk to today, even Christians, and they're just discouraged. They're just troubled and they need a little more today. I think Jesus knows that. I think he can give that. And it's not something that's probably, uh, I'm not talking about something that's extra biblical. We don't uh, agree with those things. They don't line up with scripture. But I think that God can meet those needs through the power of the Spirit and the Word of God if we'll just let Him. And He'll respond to those needs that we have. He knows your heart. He knows where you're at. I think every time, secondly this morning, that we see when Jesus responded to someone, that He responded in compassion and love as only He could. You know, the Lord loves us this morning. And, uh, and for some people, I think that's something they've just got to take a deep hold on. The Lord loves you this morning and he loves you where you're at and he loves you, maybe not what you're doing at the time, maybe not the attitudes. I can't say that he endorses our doubt of scripture. I can't say that he uh, endorses our sinfulness when we're uh, astray for him. He can't endorse our, uh, again, our willingness to maybe not follow him or to do his will. Obviously that goes against him. He doesn't, but you know what? We find that the Lord loves us. And we can find that throughout scripture that his love doesn't change. We sometimes walk away from him. We make choices that take us away from him. We make choices that take us away from his protection and his guidance. We often do that. But again, his love for us is ever constant. And may we never forget that. And when he responds, he responds with compassion and love. He doesn't endorse our sin. He doesn't approve of it. He's not going to allow us to profit or gain from it. It always has a consequence. It always has a payday. But still yet, we find that Jesus responds with compassion and love. I know even in my reading the other day, I read through uh, uh, the account of the prodigal son. And, uh, you know, you never tire maybe of, of reading that account. Though after the prodigal son had wasted all of his inheritance and riotous living, and he decides that I'm tired of eating with the hogs, I'm just going to go home and be a servant unto my father and beg some place that I'll have bread to spare. And coming over the hill where the father uh, probably worked and looked and maybe longed to see his son come, and he looks one day and he recognizes him afar off, and he runs to meet him. What a picture that is, and what a picture of the response and all that is uh, given as his son who was weary and his son who was wayward has now come home. Jesus, I think, sees us in the same way and he responds with compassion and love. Thirdly, he gives answers. He meets the need. In the case of Thomas, he gave him a little more. Thomas had a lack of faith. Jesus met that need. Thomas uh, had a actually had a test that he wanted to do. He said, he said, I want to be able to touch those hands. I want to be able to touch that side. And Jesus allowed him to do that. And he met those needs. Some will say, well, you know, he did that for Thomas. He's not going to do that for me. No, he's probably not going to appear and allow uh, you to do that. He's left us something better uh, or just uh, the equivalent according to scripture, uh, his word and uh, himself. A lot of those uh, we can see together, but as we hold uh, the word of God, he's left us the, all the evidence we need of him. And again, some of it just comes back to faith because Thomas could have denied those. He could have said he got them some other way. 
I mean, there's all kinds of things that Thomas could have done, but Thomas believed when he was given the test of faith and he took that as Jesus met his needs. So he gave him the answers that he needed. You know, Thomas needed just a little more in his life. He was close there to where he believed. He had seen so much just like the others. Uh, but again, just because you see things, it doesn't translate into a heart decision. Judas is our example of that. Think of Judas as he walked with Christ. Think of all that he did. Think of the forgiveness, even in the compassion, even at the Last Supper as he was handed the sop uh, by Jesus. And <coughs> excuse me, Jesus knowing what he was about to do, the betrayal, all that would come. And Judas having seen so much and yet never believed and walked away from all of that. I just don't understand that. But yet scripture records that. So just because we see things doesn't translate to faith in our heart. Thomas was on the way and he just needed a little more things and Jesus gave him that. Ultimately, it comes back <coughs> to Jesus met his need. He met the need that he had. You know, today, I think that, again, if you're struggling, I think that if you, uh, again, find yourself in a place of spiritual need, and maybe it's some extra faith, again, some doubts, some sins, some problems. Jesus can meet your need this morning. I think scripture bears that out. I think he can give us what we need. He giveth more grace. And if you read that passage in James, it's talking about those who humble themselves before the Lord. Jesus can give that faith. <coughs> he can give that grace that we need and help our faith in the time of need. Lastly, this morning, not only did he uh, respond to his need, did he do it with compassion and love? Did he give answers? He gave him encouragement and he encouraged Thomas. He also told him that, again, many had come without the same thing that he had and they believed and Jesus uh, sort of let him know that what he did was a, a different and an unusual thing. But Jesus gave him some encouragement and Thomas would go on and serve him. The 145th Psalm, as I close this morning, in verse 8, it uh, reads and it says in Psalm 145 and verse uh, 18, it says, The Lord is nigh unto all them that call upon him, to all that call upon him in truth. The Lord is nigh unto them. This morning, what is your need? What do you have? Are you in a place, uh, and maybe you don't have a need this morning, you may have it sometime, but are you in a place that you could use a little more? That maybe it's just a little more faith maybe a little more encouragement, maybe just a little more help to get us through the toils and the trials of this world. Whatever we have, may we come to the Lord and may we allow him to meet our needs just as he met the needs of Thomas. A little more. I think he's capable this morning. I think he's willing and desiring and I think he'll do what we need when we need a little more. Oh, that we might seek him. Oh, that we might trust him and all that we might have our needs met in Christ. If you don't know him as Savior, trust him. He'll save you this morning. He'll give you that eternal security and salvation. He'll help you to know that you're saved. I believe he'll take away those doubts as he did for Thomas. I think he'll help us to serve him. I think he'll give us strength to live in this world, a faith-filled life serving him. May we give him all that we have, even our doubts, our discouragement, our trials, because sometimes we just need a little more. And I think he'll meet those needs. Let us stand with our heads bowed this morning as we have a time.